My name is Lempo, a general of Zhao. During the turbulent years of the Warring States period, with my courage and wisdom, I ensured that the flag of Zhao flew high on the battlefield for over 30 years. In that era, I was known as one of the four great generals of the Warring States, alongside Bai Qi, Li Mu, and Wang Jian. My story begins in 327 BC, the year I was born. I vividly remember the first time I led troops into battle in 283 BC when I commanded the Zhao army to attack Siguo. At that time, the powers of Zhao Qi and Qin were comparable, with the being the dominant force in the east. To weaken Qi, I was ordered to attack Yang Jin. I knew this battle was a perfect opportunity to establish my reputation. Amid the sound of war drums and flying dust, I led the army to victory, breaking through cities and fortresses, defeating the Qi army completely. The Battle of Yangjing not only solidified Zhao's position among the eastern states, but also earned me the title of Shangqing. From then on, my name became synonymous with the courage and valor of the Zhao army. Reflecting on that battle, the memory remains vivid. Qi army retreated under our fierce attack. The battlefield was filled with smoke and the sound of fighting. I wielded my spear, leading the Zhao army to charge and defeat the enemy. The sky over Yangjing witnessed the invincible might of the Zhao army on that day. In my military career, the most significant cooperation was the alliance at Mianxu with Ling Xiangru. At that time, Qin invaded again and captured our Shicheng, facing a strong enemy, Zhao Wang lost confidence. After discussing with Ling Xiangru, we decided that Zhao Wang should personally go to Mianxu to negotiate with Qin Wang. Together with Ling Xiangru, we escorted Zhao Wang to Mianxu. Before leaving, I told Zhao Wang, Your Majesty's journey will last only 30 days. If you do not return within 30 days, Please appoint the crown prince as the king to prevent Qin from threatening Zhao. This statement not only reassured Zhao Wang but also demonstrated my foresight and decisiveness as a general. At Mianxu, Li Xiangru used his wisdom and courage to skillfully thwart Qi Mang's schemes, ensuring Zhao Wang a safe return. Li Xiangru was promoted to Shangqing for his merit, ranking above me. I felt indignant believing my achievements in siege warfare far exceeded his verbal skills. Feeling ashamed, I threatened to humiliate Lin Xiangru. Hearing this, Lin Xiangru did not confront me but avoided me. His followers were puzzled, thinking it was a sign of weakness. But Lin Xiangru explained, The powerful Qin dares not attack Zhao because of General Lian and me. If we fight, Zhao will surely fall. I endure this for the sake of the country's safety. These words reached my ears and I felt deeply ashamed. Thus, I took off my shirt carried a thorny branch and went to Li Xiangru door to apologize. From then on, we resolved our differences and became lifelong friends. Our reconciliation strengthened the unity within Zhao and boosted morale. Together, Li Xiangru and I made Zhao one of the strongest states in the east, successfully defending against Qin, which dared not easily advance eastward. However, fate is unpredictable. In 269 BC, Zhao Huibemang died, and Zhao Xiaochengwang ascended the throne. Qin again adopted the strategy of allying with distant states and attacking nearby ones, forming alliances with Qi and Chuo while attacking smaller neighboring states. In 260 BC, Qin's army attacked Han Di Shangdang. Isolated and helpless, the governor Feng Ting offered Shangdang to Zhao. A fierce struggle between Qin and Shao ensued. With the death of the renowned general Zhao Shu and the severe illness of Lin Xiangru, the heavy responsibility of military command fell on my shoulders. Facing the aggressive Qin army, I led 200,000 Zhao troops to confront them at Changping. The Qin army, having taken Yevang in the south and Shangdang in the north, severed the north-south connection at Changping and were full of morale. Our army, on the other hand, was at a disadvantage due to the long march. I decided to fortify our defenses and wear down the enemy, building strong fortifications relying on the mountainous terrain. Despite several provocations from the Qin army, I ordered my troops to hold the fort and not engage. I also gathered the people of Shandan to assist with battlefield logistics and fortification work. For three years, our strong defense thwarted the Qin army's plans for a swift victory. However, Qin's mastery of strategy led them to employ a counterplan, convincing Zhao Wang that I was afraid to fight, and suggesting that Dao Kuo replace me as general. Zhao Wang, eager for victory, fell for the ploy, dismissed me and appointed Zhao Kuo as general. Despite Lin Xiangru's strong objections, Pointing out that Zhao Kuo was only good at theoretical tactics, 
Jawai insisted on his choice. I was heartbroken but powerless to change anything, and I retreated in sorrow. Jiaokuo completely changed my defensive strategy, leading to the disastrous defeat of the Zhao army at Changping, where over 400,000 Zhao troops were slaughtered. This battle dealt a crippling blow to Zhao from which it never recovered. I was filled with sorrow and regret, blaming myself for not holding my position and protecting Zhao's peace. After the Battle of Changping, Zhao was greatly weakened, and its national strength declined. Yet, as a general of Zhao I did not lose my fighting spirit due to this defeat. In 245 BC, Zhao Xiaotongwang died, and his son Zhao Daoxiangwang took the throne. Despite the domestic and international dangers, I remained loyal to Zhao, always ready to don my armor again. However, Zhao Daoxiangwang, influenced by the slanderous Guo Kai, believed that I was too old to serve as a general. Guo Kai not only excluded me, but also deliberately defamed my abilities in front of the king. Eventually, Zhao Wang dismissed me from my military post and appointed Yue Cheng in my place. With no power left, I had no choice but to leave Zhao and seek refuge in Wei's Taliang. Although Wei accepted me, they neither trusted nor utilized me. During those days, my heart was filled with longing for Zhao and anger towards the treacherous ministers, but I knew there was nothing I could do. In Wei, I often reminisced about the battlefield and my comrades. Despite being in a foreign land, I remained concerned about Zhao's fate. I repeatedly submitted petitions to Zhao, hoping to serve once more, but to no avail. Even so, I never gave up hope. In 245 BC, after several sieges by the Qin army, Zhao Wang finally decided to reinstate me. I waited eagerly for Zhao's envoys to welcome me back. However, Guo Kai secretly bribed the envoys to speak ill of me. When they saw me, I ate a large meal of rice and meat in front of them and demonstrated my strength by donning armor and mounting a horse. Yet, the envoys reported back to Zhao Wang saying, General Lei may be old, but he still has a good appetite. However, while sitting with me, he had to relieve himself three times. Zhao Wang, believing I was too old to serve, did not reappoint me. Disappointed, I continued to endure humiliation in Wei. At this time, Chu, hearing of my presence in Wei, secretly invited me to Chu. After taking up a position as a general in Chu, I did not achieve any notable success. I once told the ministers of Chu, I longed to use the people of Zhao. This revealed my deep longing for my homeland and compatriots. However, Zhao never re-employed me, the general who had once achieved great merits for Zhao. Eventually, I passed away in Shouchun Chu, ending my turbulent life. Though I died in a foreign land, my heart always belonged to Zhao. I fought for Zhao for over 50 years, achieving countless victories, but I never saw Zhao's revival. My tomb is located on the southwestern slope of Fang Yushan, Ba Gongshan, 7 kilometers north of present-day Shouxian in Anhuisheng. Facing west, the tomb is 30 meters in circumference, bordered by Huaihe to the west, and surrounded by mountains on the north, south, and east. The tomb lies quietly amidst scenic mountains, as if my heroic spirit still lingers in the world. Zhao was destroyed by Qin a few decades after my death. Hearing of Zhao's demise filled me with sorrow and helplessness. Reflecting on all I had done for Zhao, I had no regrets. My life, filled with countless battles and conquests for Zhao, ended with such a poignant conclusion. My life, as Sima Guang said, Lian Po use or disuse was truly tied to the survival of Zhao. Amid the stormy era of the warring states, I devoted myself to Zhao, and although I could not save Zhao's fate, I have no regrets in my heart. I hope future generations will remember me for my spirit of loyalty and duty to the country and the people. War is cruel, but in the heart of every soldier, the nation is always the most important belief. Lianpo, this name may be just a wave in the long river of history, but I wish to stir up greater waves with my courage and loyalty. No matter where I am, or...